Oh, welcome back down from space, guys. I hope you enjoyed last week's rocket adventure. Um, thanks, as always, for sending in your videos and pictures of your efforts of the stomp rocket. Some really good ones there. Lovely to see you all trying this at home. Uh, this week, I thought we'd bring things back into the garden here at Trawergi um, and have a look a bit closer to home. So today we're going to look at what sort of animals and things like that we can find around the garden. Uh, though I appreciate not all of you have got a garden, so I thought the first thing we'd do would be to make a bird feeder so that you can bring the wildlife to you. Super! So this one's nice and easy. You're not going to need very much at all for it. All you're going to need is a small plastic drinks bottle, a couple of sticks, maybe around 30 centimetres long, your ball of string, a pair of scissors, and then something to put inside, like some uh, seeds, maybe a pumpkin seed, sunflower seed, something like that. Super! Okay, so first off, we want to make some perches for the birds to sit on. So, you take the bottle, and we're going to try and put a stick through it. Now, we want this to be fairly low down, so that we don't need to fill the seeds all the way to the top for the birds to get them. So you need to make a hole in your bottle at the bottom. The safest way to start this off is with a drawing pin. So you go for where you're going to do it and just pop the drawing pin in. There we go. And that just makes an initial little hole. And then take your scissors, find your little hole and using the sharp bit of the scissors, widen it out. And remember what we said last time, you always push the scissors away from you so that if you slip, you're not going to injure yourself. So really gentle, just widen it out there. And you just want to make it about as wide as your stick so that you can push that through to make your perch. So now I just need to make a hole on the other side and then put the stick through. And there we go, that's your first perch. So now we want to put a second perch in and we're going to do this at 90 degrees to the other one to make a cross shape and maybe about one centimetre higher up. There we go, lovely. Next, we need to make some holes for the seeds to come out. So you want to put these around about four centimetres higher up than your perches. So again, we'll take our drawing pin to start off the hole and then we'll widen it with the scissors. But with this, just make them quite small to start off with um, because if you make them too big, all the seeds when you put them in will just fall out. So we'll make them small and then we'll put some seeds in and see if we need to make them bigger later. Now we just need to make one final hole at the bottom. Now, the purpose of this is to let any water drain out that might come in the holes on the side. So same as all the others, take your drawing pin, make a tiny little pilot hole and then widen it with the scissors being really careful. So now we can fill up our bird feeder with our bird feed. Now if you've got a funnel, that'll make it a bit easier. Otherwise, just be really careful and pour it in. So that's our feeder all full up, but as you can see, that hole there that we made is much smaller than the seeds inside, so the birds are going to struggle to get anything out of here. So all we need to do is take our scissors, again being really careful, and just widen out our holes. Just push it in and keep rotating until the hole is big enough for the seeds to come out if a bird sort of pokes at it, but not so that they flow out um, on their own. So there you can see, with a bit of shaking, the seeds come out. So that probably means the birds can get them out themselves as well. Once you widen the holes, you might have a few uh, sticky out bits of plastic like that so we can just trim them up with the scissors um, and then we're ready to hang it up now to tie it up I'm going to teach you another new knot so this one is called a round turn and two half hitches 
and it's useful for quite a few things um, it's useful if you need to tie something off under load um, it's also useful if you need to tie something up with a loop that tightens to keep the load snug so what you do this first bit we do the round turn so you go around the neck of the bottle all the way around so that's your round turn and now we're going to do our two half hitches so you come under the long tail tuck inside and pull them both tight so that's our first half hitch and then you come back over the top and up inside and pull again and that's your second half hitch so round turn two half hitches so you see now as you pull it that just tightens on the neck and there we go so that's one end now we need to tie it off to something to hang it up for the birds now i'm just going to hang my bird breeder up on my washing line but you could easily just use a tree in your garden or if you don't have a garden you could tie it out the window um, anything high up that you can just leave it hanging from that'll do the job just fine so we're going to use another round turn two half hitches here to tie it on so this is what i meant when i said it was good for tying things up under load because once you do your round turn the load's taken by that turn and you're not having to hold the weight of it so it's really good if you have to tie something heavy up so round turn there and then just do your two half hitches to secure it so one half hitch two half hitches and that's secured now you can see here we've got another bird feeder i made which is super super simple all that is is two sticks tied together with a square lashing like we learned in the dens video with an apple just punctured through the middle i just use a pencil to do that resting on top so there we go a feast for the birds yum yum now it might take the birds a little bit of time to get used to your bird feeders so don't worry if it takes a few days for them to come and check it out and also this time of year there's actually quite a lot of food out and about for them so it might take a bit longer than normal but just be patient and they'll come so in the meantime let's go and see what else we can find in the garden most of the wildlife you're going to find in your garden is actually teeny tiny small and you're going to have to get down on your hands and knees and really start snooping around to find it a good place to try for creepy crawlies is under old stones and plant pots and things like that. Should we have a look, see what we can find? Oh, well, here's some um, wood lice here, and that's a little slug. This one's going for a little walk. Another little wood lice. Oh, that's a little beastie. Don't know what that one is. Oh, well, look at that. I think this one's called a silverfish. Are you going to do anything for us? Give him a tickle. Oh, he's gone. Now a really good place to look for creepy crawlies is a freshly dug vegetable patch or flower bed. But make sure you don't get in trouble with whoever put all that hard work in. Oh, look at this, some wiggly worms. That one's really going for it. Look at that wiggly worm. He's having a good wiggle, isn't he? Here's a hungry little bee. He's getting some nectar. And spreading pollen by accident, which helps to keep the flowers alive. Busy, isn't he? Busy bee. And who have we got here? A super speedy snail. Look at him go. Let's have a little look under here and see what we can find. Oh, wow, look at this. Looks like a little snail rave going on here. Party time, woo! Now, if you want to spot bigger animals, you're going to have to be very still very quiet and try and blend in if you've got some camouflage that might be a good start otherwise maybe the best thing to do is go inside and look out of a window and try not to make any noise and just see what comes along you never know you might be surprised another way you can get up close to the animals in your garden is to use a pair of binoculars or a camera with a good zoom That's about it for today guys i hope you have fun looking around for wildlife in your back garden but until next time bye bye they're off
four in line, Stradivarius, the yellow cap, Vazirabad in the green colours, Frankie Dottori on Stradivarius, Christoph Sumil on Vazirabad, Stradivarius is narrowly in front, he leads by a neck or so, Stradivarius has won the Gold Cup.